Hello everybody, it is your boy Twin Plays here, back again with another video. I hope you guys are doing amazing. Um, it has been just a bit since we did a tutorial, and of course, as you can see by the title and the thumbnail, we are here with the Please Donate game. Uh, this has taken a few days, and I have not solo developed this. I had actually a few people help me out, which we're going to talk about in a second. But if you are new to my channel, which some of you guys might be watching this and you are new, feel free to hit that subscribe button because I got a lot of cool videos out there, and I, I would love you to hit that button. Um, but if you want to uh, join the Discord as, as well, we help people out there. And if you have any pr problems with like scripting or anything like there with your game, we'll help you out. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys are all having a good day. It's just been a bit. I'm sorry. I kind of sound sick and congested because I, I just had a horrible cold. Um, but um, yeah, so as you guys can tell, uh, we just have a few things in here and we're going to explain really what this is and how we're going to do it. Uh, you can look at the timestamps if you want to skip this. But um, this game was created by me, Dev Daniel and Sharks. Um, now, Sharks did the building. So thank you to Sharks. He did the building and the lighting. So as you can tell, it's really cool. Um, Looks really nice. Uh, I did part of the scripting and the building. And then Dev right here, Daniel, is one of my new friends. Um, he's really cool. He actually helped me out with the scripting. The, literally all of the scripting. So uh, you guys should really go check him out. Uh, his user will be in the description. And uh, any support to this game will also be going to him. Uh, I don't know if anyone wants to donate. But I'll, I'll pay half of it to him. Um, but yeah, so... This is it. So how this game works is you basically get to claim a stand and you get to edit it and all this kind of stuff. Um, you basically get a text right here that says success successfully claimed um, and you get this audio button right here. Now, as you guys could tell, there was actually an output error called Camp Parse Jarsid. Um, it's actually supposed to put the buttons. I'll actually click this and redo this and see if it does it. Um, I heard the API is services down right now, so I don't know if it's gonna work in this video. I, it's really timed the bad. T it's bad timing right now, but I want to post it. So as you can tell, you get this edit. Now, if we go on the other side, it won't be right there. But this is your stand. Um, you get to edit it, and you can type whatever you want. So let's type. Um, please subscribe to twin okay let's do that oh god subscribe to twin place all right so you hit apply and it will put it up there and it'll put up the notification disappear and there you go now um as you can tell we have the donated and raised leaderboard so in here uh we have the text that shows how much you've raised and we have the tip little right here now i don't really have a way of showing you that the particle emitters work and everything like that and the sounds but they do so just feel free to get the kit and i'm gonna show you how to do all of that in a second here uh, but yeah that's a, that's about it it's pretty simple stuff um it just took forever because it took us a while now i did not add leaderboards and all that kind of stuff for you guys i will be doing that in another update and i will be doing a game pass tool and everything like that um it's just i really want to get this video out because it's trending right now and i know you guys have been waiting for this since we got the main scripting done then might as well just post it so yeah that's what it looks like now if if i don't know why i did that real quick it's just this sometimes roblox doesn't just like to put the thing up so that's what's going to happen is if a player's assets doesn't load then you will need to have them quit and rejoin and also what happens is if when the player leaves it will uh make sure that stand is claimable again yeah it's definitely not going to work right now because the api services just mess around so just give it a break it will work for you guys um and definitely probably in game but i hope you like this and uh let's get right into this you guys all right, so you're going to either go to the description and click the game or go to my profile and grab this right here. Now, it's pretty simple to do it, um, to edit it and download. So you can click this, and it's not going to say all this for you, but it's going to say edit or download. You can download the game, and you can upload this yourself, or you can click edit and then just upload it there. I recommend just kind of just clicking edit and then just going off from there. Um, when you do that, it is going to load you into the game. So it will load you into this full-on game. It won't be under me, though. It will be under you or your files. You're going to want to go to file and you're going to publish to Roblox, okay? And publish to Roblox as whatever you like. Um, you know what? I'm actually going to be doing this. Let me uh, publish to Roblox. Um, I will do this with you. Uh, so we're going to go right here, publish to Roblox as, and I'm going to actually upload another one because uh, we wanted to do one more for uh, Dora Fam. Go right here and we're going to hit create new game and I'm going to say, uh, please donate. And we will be creator right here, Dora Fam, and there you go. So, what's going to happen is it will make a new file for you. You do the description later, and you can do all of that. But bada beam, bada boom. So, now we can, uh, if, if you want, let's see. I don't think I have two files open. Uh, I'll take a look at this. Yeah, so I'll go back into here. Please donate. 
and bada beam, it's up. So, um, it's pretty simple actually. Uh, there's a few th scripts in the server script we're gonna talk about. Don't worry about server storage, storage UI, replicate storage, workspace, and starter character scripts. All right, starter character scripts, this is just the AFK script. Uh, you don't need to really worry about this. Uh, I kind of did this myself and just added it in. If you do want to get rid of that, just delete these right here. These are just the AFK events, pretty simple. Uh, and same goes for the AFK handler right here. Um, and then what we have is uh, the main things right here. So in map, we have the 3D text. Let's just put this back into here, so into map. Um, you can mess around with this all you want. There's spawn points and everything just around here. Um, that's pretty easy. We did do HD admin. If you want to add admins yourself, go into here and change the text right here. Pretty simple. Um, then we have a global sound. Keep that right there. That is the sound that is going to be playing the whole time. This is just the like lobby music and stuff. Then we have the stands and it's going to be one through 12. Now, I would not recommend creating more stands because of just lag and everything like that. I would recommend just keeping it to this or even lowering it if you want. I'd recommend just keeping it to this because um, it's going to be hard for you to adjust and make. But let's just go into one of them. So um, you can ungroup this if you like and make your own stand. Or you can just build a stand and make sure you have the tip jar, particles, proximity, sign description, side prices, and sign title. So the reason for all of these is because there is some certain stuff in here that you're going to need and you're going to have uh, stuff. So tip jar is just like the design, of course. That's where the particle is going to come out. Right here we have the stand sound. This is a sound that is going to be played when they buy the money. Um, and then we have the particle emitter. So when we click enabled, that's going to come out like that. Particles, I just said those pretty cool. I mean, you can work on that all you want and change it up like you like. Just your choice. Um, and then we have the proximity, which is going to be the top. We're going to talk about that in a second. Sign description is right here. So money raised. Owner label. Sign title, which is in here. Sign label. And we're going to talk about all these. So I'm going to go into all of this because it's a little hard, but it's just like, it's weird. It's all connected together. So in the attachment, um, this is where the the prompt's going to be, as you can tell. So you can move that if you like, however you want. We have the edit prompt and the proximity prompt. As you can see right here, you can change this how you like, how it says um, edit prompt, object text, all that kind of stuff. Um, what we have is the edit prompt is not enabled. What we do is when they claim the stand, we're going to enable that edit prompt. That's why it's not enabled right now. But inside the scripts, let's really talk about this. So quickly, just talking about the sign label. This is on the event. What we're doing is um, on the event of the, uh, let's say, update sign. That's the event. Uh, we're going to check for the text. And if the owner value, which is going to be right here, is no one. If it is the player name, as in the person who sent the event, then we're going to filter the text. And we're going to set this text to whatever they sent. So it is filtered enabled. Just FYI, I just want to let you know. So yeah pretty cool now in the edit prompt um we'll talk about that in a second the main script is the hardest um and kind of just talks about it so we have a lot of stuff we have bindables notifications let's just talk about the functions so we're getting the player name we're checking if the owner value is nil or no one if it is then we're going to find the owner and we're going to send the notification saying that they claim the stand and i'll talk about this in a second this is a notification event then we're sending the owner value to the player name, as in saying we're changing this to Twin Plays Dev. Then we're going to set the text down here um, to Twin Plays Stand. Um, then we send the event again, saying they claimed it. And we um, send this user ID. Um, so we get the user ID, fire it, which I'll talk about in a second. The bindable, I'm pretty sure, yeah, is claim plot. Uh, I did not script that myself. Dev did that. Uh, but then we talk about the raise value, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um... Local owner value equals instance. Um, so this is the new one. This is going to be setting this to the player. So we're going to be setting a new value to the player that knows that they own a stand. The reason for this is because um, we want to check if they have a stand. And if they leave, we check what stand it is. And then we reset it. So that's kind of how that works. Now, if you can see right here, player dot removing. Um, we're going to check for the owner name, and if it is, then we're basically going to just reset the stand. That's what all this is. Um, I won't get into detail about that because it kind of just makes sense. Just read it one by one. I really believe in you guys. Don't edit it anything, though, because you don't really need to. So then, in the edit prompt, as in when we enable it, this will send an event if they activate it that will send this event, we'll say edit, okay? Then, this will trigger this to update sign, as in saying this will edit 
pop up the edit GUI, which we're going to talk about in a second. And this is just the prompt trigger to pop it up. So that's pretty simple. So just remember the owner values. That's what we're using. Um, it's really nice. And then um, this changes every time someone gets updated. But this will also change when the player claims a stand because it's going to check right away. So we just got 1 through 12, okay? Now, looking into starter GUI, we have these right here. These are the sign prices, which are a door need to... Um, oh, wait. I guess they're already just adorned to that. They are what we do... Uh, display the buttons in so as you can tell scrolling frame local script server script and then the port values and the purchase button so you can mess with this all you like your choice i think let's see can i make this visible oh yeah i can't um so if you want to change the button look you might just want to do another gui and just work on it from there but pretty simple but so what we're doing right here is this is the um buttons so if they click a purchase button if they click the purchase, we are going to prompt purchase, not prompt product. We had this problem where we were just taking us forever to figure it out. It's prompt purchase, not prompt product, because this isn't a dev product. This is a t-shirt, a pants, or any of that. So that is what we're doing right here. Once we do this, we're going to send that to the um, server, and then we're going to check, which I'm going to talk about in a second. In the local script, we are going to be doing the on event thing. So on event... If the booth equals this, we're going to get the product info, and this is where we're going to do the clones, and we're going to send them all and display them all. Then we're going to do the remove buttons from client, and we're just going to remove everything. So this is where we're going to be displaying them right here, and I'll talk about how we do that. So this is all the same, as you can tell. Now, like I said, if you really just want to make another one, just duplicate this and make it 13, and then just get another stand, adorty it, and make it 13. Um, so yeah, that's all you got to do. Then we have edit prompt handler, which is going to be the um, edit prompt, of course. So if the value equals true, this is where we're enabling and disabling the edit prompt, which is nice. That's what I was screwing up on. Um, so the edit GUI, this is the GUI that we um, edit. It's really nice. Uh, I decided to go off the look of the please donate game. So yeah. So in here, it's kind of simple, actually. It's the event on client. We're going to display the blur and the frame, which is going to say when we want to edit, we display that. If they leave that edit box, we're going to set the text right here, the local variable to string. This is what we did for the music request system. Pretty nice. Then, if the submit button happens, we are going to fire the server, um, telling we know, and we're going to send the event, which is the update sign of the text, which is going to be that text they entered. Then on the cancel button, we're just going to play the cancel sound. So guys, there's a lot of cool sounds. I really hope you enjoyed this because it's really nice. Um, mute music is pretty simple too. Uh, this will just change the image and change the sound workspace. Nice, right? Um... Then we have the pop-up, which is going to be the claims, successfully claimed, you already own a booth, and edited. So this is, sorry, this is what I was going to say. So we send to the notification um, if it's true. If the value is true, we see we say that they claim the thing, we play the sound, and we disappear it. If the value equals claimed, as in saying they already own a booth, we're going to display that text. If it has uh, been successfully edited, we send that text. So you can change that all you want right here. I think if um, you go into here text enable notification and then you mess with the text pretty nice um it's super simple so the only hard part and as you can tell so these are the modules uh data store twos right here don't need to worry about that these are all the events uh we can just close this because it's not a problem so now what it is is an afk handler oh wait no data store new handler new stats handler and then the templates and stuff we'll look at that in a second so Data store 2, pretty simple. This is the new data store. We are actually going to be using this for the new vibe kit, which I want to talk about later. But um, we're making the data key, donated and raised. We're setting the donated raised. When a player leaves, then we'll just save it and everything like that. Don't need to worry. Pretty simple. In the new handler. So this is the um, oh subcategories. I did not see what he added here. What is that all about? Oh, sub categories. URL subcategories. Oh, 2, 12, 11, 12. Okay, this is probably something the HTTP. So, we're using row proxy. Now, um, I can't really explain row proxy. Let's see. Uh, myself, I'll have to put it on the thing. So, row proxy is like a catalog, I guess you could say, and we can search for items. So, what we're doing is we're um, getting everything they own. So, that's when um, this kind of stuff you don't really want to mess with. Um, but I can just say myself... Um, there is going to be a death form post in the description that you can go look at that will explain it one by one. But um, basically what we're doing is we're cloning the assets as in saying we are, this is the new header, right? Yeah, so we're getting the template and we're putting it onto their stand on the sign prices. See right here, booth name, scrolling frame, 
putting it onto there, and then we're displaying the buttons, and they're going to be able to buy it. So this is the buy, this is the buy script, and this is where we're getting the um, stands and the assets and everything like that. Now, in the new stats handler, this is where, yeah, okay, so this is what we had to fix. So, this is where we are um, checking um, if they donated and raised. If they did, so on Marketplace Prompt Purchase Finish, not Prompt Product Finish, we are going to get the data, we are going to get their leader stats, upla update the da donated value, get the data, see what they purchased, who sold it. Now, if the person who sold it is in-game, as in got donated name, we are going to put their uh, raise value up, and then uh, we're going to put... Uh, yeah, we don't have a sold value, I'm being stupid. <laughs> but then what we're doing is we're grabbing the stands in workspace, grabbing the descendants as in everything in the stands, like every button. So anything under stands right here, we're going to get every child of it. So through one, we're literally going to get this. Through here, we're going to get this and this and this. We're going to get everything. Then, we're going to check if the object is a text label and money raise, and then if the object is part of the emitter and money. So, that, if the object dot parent dot parent dot proximity dot owner dot value equals the got donated name, then we are going to display on their stand the money and the raise and the emitter and everything like that by doing this right here, by emitting and playing. That's it. <laughs> So, I hope you guys kind of understand this. I'm sorry. I try my best to just say this simple and smooth for you guys. It really is not like it took us forever, but like you guys should understand not to really do anything in general. I'm just trying to help you learn. Um, I really hope you did enjoy this video. It really took me a while to get this out for you guys, and I'm sorry. Thank you so much, uh, Dev Daniel. He saved my life right now, and uh, I'm trying to support him as much as possible. He's also going to be helping us with the vibe kit. Uh, and I'm planning on trying to pay it because he's a good guy. That just, he's a crazy scripter. So, um, yeah, that's about it. So, make sure to publish your game. Make sure to edit it. You can do all you want stuff in here. And make sure, um, I actually forgot one more thing in security. Uh, make sure to enable all this stuff right here because this is going to be debating on, uh, if you're allowed to, uh, do everything. So, that's about it. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please comment, like, subscribe, and share everyone. Um, I will be seeing you guys in the next one, but yeah, uh, thank you very much. I hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you later.